Hey guys, Pizza here. Today we'll discuss all the basics that I know about Saint GVG build and on how to utilize manual resurrection so you can revive your guildmates faster. By the way, this is just my own opinion. Feel free to adjust anything and if I miss out on something, please do comment if you have suggestions so other viewers can have different ideas too. Now let's get into it. First for stats, just allocate it to Vit, Int, and Dex for the casting time reduction. By the way, I'm inside GVG map here and already have food, all meal B and self buffs. Overall for utility classes, what you need to boost are your HP, auto attack reduction, skill damage reduction, def and mdef percent for the coming patch, damage reduction, magic damage reduction, your resistances because of CC meta, element reduction, Demi-human reduction for some classes are still demi-human, and lastly medium size reduction if you need to counter physical class. For the runes, a third line is needed to maximize the skills, and if you can hunt for high percent of first and second line, go for it, so you can be much more tankier. As for the arcane rune, I think Indestructible and Cunning is the best in slot for GVG. Then for the Thorn Arcane Rune, other option for some players they prefer using Frenzied Rune, but I don't think you can reach 480% attack speed in Saint, unless you are willing to sacrifice some stats to put it in agility. Now let's learn more about the skills. Again, this build is specifically for GVG only. Resurrection level 2 only, to minimize cast delay with a decent HP restore, because compared to level 3, it will have longer cast delay. Only use Epiclesis if you are going to resurrect mass members within the skill's range, because of its long cast delay, plus you won't be able to cast it if there's earth field around the area. Spam Sanctuary to your Imperium if it needs healing, and to slow down the breaking of the opponent as well. Extra tip for clearance, you can use it to locate your party member. Their avatar will light up if they're in the same map, and when you use it, your character will automatically walk up to them to cast the skill. I usually do this to know if a DPS is near me, so I can use Faith Pray to them. As for Suffragium, make sure that the Sacrifice node is on for the 24% cooldown reduction. As for the debuff skills, the reason why I didn't put any is because the build focuses on supporting from the backline, prioritizing fast manual resurrections, faith prey, buffs, healing, and clearance. For prepare for elite, put blessing, angelus, assumptio, suffragium, hoddle's wing, botter's crown, and ode of hope, to have more reductions and sustain mainly for yourself, so that you won't be taken down easily, thus giving more support to your guildmates. As for Batter's Crown with Light Prayer Star Rune, which give additional max HP percent and chance to heal when it's activated, so that's why it's better to aim for high first or second line of some runes that will give you more sustain, partnered with Tier 5 of Staff of Vitality, which gives additional 10 seconds to its duration, making it last up to 50 seconds. Then for Hoddle's Wings with the third line of Night God Baptism Star Rune, which makes it no longer forbid the use of healing and reviving skills, I put it in Prepare of Elite mainly for Fimble's Winter Passive, which causes enemies within the range to lose 10% of their current HP. To activate this, you will need to have the third line of Ghost Bliss Star Rune, which is every time you use Calusio, it also uses Dark Shadow Slaughter for three enemies within its range. Plus, it also has a chance to deal freeze or dark status for 3 seconds, which can be useful for defensive or even offensive if the enemies are within your range. Again, you need the third line of Ghost Bliss Star Rune to activate this while using Calusio Heal. And yes, the debuff of this passive skill will be applied to the enemies who receive dark slaughter damage for a maximum of 25%. And as for the manual skill slot, I only have two tabs. Just adjust anything and place the skills where you will be comfortable clicking or pressing the skills. For the first tab, I put Calusio, Kyrie, Clearance, Resurrection, Epiclesis, and then Faith Prey. Keep in mind to spam Kyrie for shield against physical damage and extra move speed together with one of your party member, and then Faith Prey to your DPS when it's already on cooldown. And for the second tab, I have prepared for Elite, Slow Poison, Song, Resurrection again, just in case I died and need to reposition myself to rebuff and then use Fast Manual Resurrection if needed. Sanctuary for Healing Imperium, 
and then Batter's Aria, which you can use if you got caught up for resurrecting in the front line. Now let's head on to Equips. Again, just adjust anything if you have better equipment or card options available that are suitable for GVG. So for offhand, you can also use Sins of Living as Main Equip, and then Arcane Codex as Shadow Equip if you want to do faster manual resurrections. As for the Armor card, Agrio P card will turn your element into poison, thus making the other elements deal lesser damage to you. And it's also the cheapest card you can use to be a little bit tankier. But most of the time I'm using Garm Star for the additional skill damage reduction and chance to freeze when receiving physical damage. I'm using this garment to somehow lessen the damage of Jormungandr's. And as for physical damage, you have Kyrie, which you can spam for additional shield against physical damage. Again, feel free to adjust anything if you have better options available on your ID, or if you lack on other stats, just choose other first line of the random attribute. For example, if you have element reductions first line in foot gear, you can use that instead of damage and magic damage reduction. As for my accessories, I'm just waiting for the survival ring synth so I can use it as shadow equipment. By then, I'll use Martyr's Necklace as main accessory. Other option as shadow equipment is Ring of Immortality or Fox Teeth so you can use the speeding up skill. For the weapon, right now I think this is the best in slot for Saints because it gives a lot of healing increase, plus the tier 5 effect which removes one abnormal status every time you use Colusio, with the internal cooldown of 5 seconds, thus making sustaining more efficient every time you heal your allies. Other weapon option is Stardust Staff, which gives more damage reductions, then you can use Coarse Staff as Oracle Extract to boost your healing. Eggshell Bayou to avoid breaking of equipments. I'm using Dark Illusion Star card to reduce the fixed cast time of Song. As for the face gear, I'm using this for the auto attack and skill damage reduction. Other option is the Rental GVG Face Gear Aviation Goggle, if you want longer range of resurrection and your other skills as well. For the mouth gear, I think Angry Snarl is the best in slot for utility classes because of its high demi-human reduction, plus the 10% variable casting time reduction. As for the back gear, I'm using the GVG Rental Gear Chiling Wings for the additional healing receive, elemental reductions and extra sustain when receiving damage. For the tail, I'm using Rental GVG Star Navigator Cord for the extra move speed, freeze, stun, and stone resist, plus it's tier 5 which reduces damage taken by 30% while moving. Again, other option is Arcane Codex for offhand shadow equipment, if you want faster manual resurrection. For the armor shadow equip, I'm using Chosen Gown for the fear immunity, but again, feel free to adjust anything if you have better equipment options available on your ID. For example, you can also use Comet Armor as shadow equip. If you are going to use Luet's armor as Oracle Extract, take note that you can't use the same item as shadow equipment and Oracle Extract. But because of the CC meta, if you want solid higher freeze and stun resist, just use Meteorite Armor as Oracle Extract so you won't have problem moving around whilst giving support to your guildmates. Now let's head on to the Manual Resurrection Guide. First make sure to always cast Prepare for Elite for the Suffragium, then start spam pressing the Resurrection button and then press the X on the upper part of the screen to close the selected target so you will move on to resurrect the next ally near the area. Then just repeat the process, hence the fast manual resurrection which is much more efficient than casting Epiclesis. Because resurrection have lower cast delay, and you can't always use Epiclesis especially when there's a earth field around the area. By the way, Avoid placing the resurrection on the last two skill bar, so you won't accidentally press the respawn button when you die. 